pizza place. All right, let's get down to business. Art supplies. You love them, you hate them. Some of them are really good, some of them are really bad. Sometimes you buy a bunch of art supplies because you hear reviews about it and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta buy these art supplies now. And then you get home and you're like, oh, this product came pre-dried out. But we're not talking about those today. Today, we are talking about the art supplies that I use, me, on like a weekly basis. These are the ones that I reach to all the time to get stuff done. They're just my favorite products. And so without further ado, I am going to show you my favorite art supplies and I will show you throughout my sketchbooks and other nonsense how I use said product in my shenaz. And by shenaz, I mean artwork. Also, I, I put on a lot of jewelry and I did my nails with a bunch of bugs in order for you to keep your short span of attention or maybe you have a long one, who knows? Either way, I expect compliments in the comments over my jewelry. Most of it's silver, fancy. Anyway, first up, the one we've all been waiting for is just the pen tool. Obviously, everyone's familiar with the pen tool, right? Right? I used to try to do drawings just with like those micro pens. And I always didn't like the fact that to like change any sort of width, you had to like go back over and like kind of fake it by like changing the line with manually. This little stupid dinky thing gives you so much control over your lines. It's insane. Like you have the larger calligraphy brushes that you'll find in stores and you try to draw with them and it's impossible. They're quite literally just made for calligraphy, but this is actually smaller and more pointed and more designed for drawing as opposed to like any other type of material. It's the kind of pen you'd use if you were like a comic artist doing things manually. There's some other like mangaka type brushes and I've bought them and they give you like an option to do wider things but I've gone through like a few of these nibs and I I just love them they're just the best and I was addicted to using them for a period of time I'm gonna be honest typically I don't really care what kind of ink I use with it though as long as it's able to keep a steady flow the two I'd recommend are both from Dr. P.H. Martin's also like why do you have two periods in your name Mr. Martin I still don't get it it doesn't really matter the kind but I've, I've bought all of them and I don't really see it different. This one just happens to be Black Star Matte and this one actually is different. This one says fountain pen ink so I don't really think it's waterproof but it is the most liquidy ink ever. If you have something that's like a refillable material you can refill it with this and it won't clog. Like it's anti-clog. I don't know how it does it. I have it in this color and I have it in blue and it amazes me because like these ones will dry and like clog up a brush this bad boy, this bad boy stays. And you might be looking at this and you're like, hey girl, fine detail, that's pretty dirty. How do you clean those? Bombe pin cleaner, Dr. P.H. Martin. I used to use the pinata um, alcohol like cleaner. It's in a little squirt bottle and it worked fine. But then I tried this and I was like, oh, it's designed to clean up these. That makes more sense. Let me just demo this cleaning for you. You go like this. It's been sitting there for months. Look at that. Easily takes it off. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's starting to clean it so quickly. I imagine you could probably leave it in one of these solutions. I'm like worried it's going to take off my nail polish. <laughs> but it doesn't like smell like acetone. But I'm pretty sure acetone would probably work for these. But you just kind of take a moment and you just scrub it. Oh yeah, scrub it. It's important to keep these clean too. Because if they get all clogged up, they can like either rust or they can just work less for what you're doing. It probably could deserve to get cleaner, but I just want to demo how this works. It has a little tinky bottle too. I like these. I always like when it has a squirt bottle. I never really use it to transfer, but if you're mixing colors onto a palette, it is a golden resource to have. So you don't have to switch out and clean a different movable thing or God forbid, tilt this. That sounds horrific. You just take this, dip it inside. You hope that you got the correct amount. Sometimes I lightly tap against the edge and then you can lightly drag and it creates beautiful lines. And say like you want to come down here, you do a swoop and now it has the great variation. I will admit it works better with a new one. This one I haven't used in a hot minute, but like you can create some great lines with it. It's great for cross hatching and hatching little dots. Let's draw a little guy. That's the only issue you can run into is when it gets caught like this, it can sometimes, it's hard to do it on purpose, but it can flick up in a really unhelpful way and then you can get some splatter. And it's hard to hide that sometimes in the piece. It's also good for filling in areas. Like if you wanna go like this, you can fill it in. Or if you wanna do a huge area and you like do scribbles, like Edward Gorey, it's great for that too. But I love her. And especially it's great if you do like a watercolor piece and you wanna ink on top of, as opposed to like risking clogging your like nib pens. This goes right on top without irritants. It can just glide over watercolor. But what's next? Up next is the Pentel 
brush pen. This one, I originally bought it and it was under the name Kuratake. I don't know if Pentel and Kuratake are like a sister brand, but I've seen this exact pen with like a different logo on it, or like sometimes it doesn't have like the symbol on it. it it's been worn out, but I swear to God there was a symbol there. And this one is just Pentel brand. It comes with this amazing brush tip that no matter what has always like reformed into the perfect shape. Like I've never had the issue of this fraying over time. I've had this same pen for like probably 10 years now, which is weird. I'm like, did I get this when I was 13? I, did I? I don't, I feel like I've had this forever. Like there's been times where I'm like 80% sure I've lost it and I'm like, oh, I gotta buy another one. And then it just shows up. It gets you great lines with great control and it's great for doing sketches when you just want to like be loose with something. You can just go in and just like work out the shape and play around with it. If you want to fill in large areas, I find that it's also great for that. I imagine if you were doing calligraphy, this could be fun too. It could be like great if you want to be like, you know, some sort of, I don't, is that fire? I don't know, fire or something? I don't know. Someone can tell me. I've used it on pieces like this where it can fill in a large area. You can kind of feel it where it's crusted in. It's great for stuff like this where you just want to have the fun shapes and then you can go back over and like fill in areas and it gets you a lot of unique patterns that way. Now, if I'm on the go and I don't have the time to use this and I don't want the large thick lines of using this, I'll use Copic multi-liners in a variety of sizes in order to get the appearance I want. When I first started using multi-liners, because I feel like a lot of artists these days start out by using multi-liners because they want to bring them to school and draw while they're in class. And they're in, you know, like the art stores. A lot of people buy the Sakura ones that are like in that tan green type of, you know, holder. I used to use those all the time. But if I went over it with like an alcohol marker or watercolor, no matter what, it would bleed. These are designed to not bleed and to work in tangential? Tangentially? In tangent? They work alongside Copics. And it's quite nice because as someone who's had to put up with that in art where there's suddenly you have like a light skin color coming in, you have to worry about it bleeding. If you sit these and let them dry, it's far less likely to bleed than like Securus do because it's designed to work with it because it's from the same company. Stop trying to slide out. Jesus Christ. Stay. 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 The only issue I do have with these is that if you use them for too long, sometimes the little nib on the top can just like break away. It gets like stale and suddenly you just don't have it. So if you press down a certain way, you can get a line, but it's not easy to get a line from the side. Go like this and all of a sudden have a line. But here you can see the nib because it's a much larger one. Angry snail. In the past, I've used these kind of all together to create images like this, like this old like guy from the 1920s gold rush or like this and the swan and you know I've gone in with these colors and it's great you know this one fills in the background this one does the lines on it and then this one can do some shading and you know light and stuff like that. Side note the Blick Studio markers and the Copic markers they're the same these two are the same this one works just as well sometimes even better this one works sometimes even better than this does I'm just saying it I want you to know that if you want to get into Copic but don't want to pay for it these can do the same and they come in a large variety of colors the same as Copic not as many but they're still good I just want to throw it out there all these colors were done with this as opposed to a Copic the reason I'm not like stating Copic as like a brand that I use on a daily basis it's just because back when I was really into doing marker art I got like two sets of Copics and how fast these things dry out sometimes you don't even have to touch them they just go they just dry up there's just nothing in the tank there's nothing that wants to come to the nibs like even this one looks a little bit dry I don't like I don't appreciate it, I don't like it. And that's that on that. Now what I'm feeling really super silly and on the go and I feel like not breaking a multi-liner on the way or I feel like just running out some ideas really fast and not worrying about the material breaking. I like to use jelly rolls and of course this one right now doesn't want to work. That's one of the issues with these. Sometimes they just decide not to work. I don't know if they get clogged or what but sometimes you can just sit here and you can see the ink inside and then you're going do, 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 and it's annoying. For that reason I keep like a bunch of them around at all times. Please! I, I swear they're good. I, I swear I use them all the time. The different colors will run differently. This one will go. Oh, this is embarrassing. But hey, it's honest. Sometimes these things just don't want to run. They don't want to do what you want them to do. Let me just show you what they can do. Here's some drawings of sea creatures. I decided just to go through and draw a bunch of these. I did it with a gel pen. You can tell from the little scratchy lines. It's nice. It creates a nice rounded effect. Really nice 
fun lines. The only worry you have is that it doesn't dry super fast, so you run the risk of like smudging when you go over things. But it's a good time. I like it. When I'm really feeling like I don't care about my stuff being archival, I like to use a Papermate Inkjoy Gel 0.5. It's so smooth. I use it for note taking. All of my pieces start out by me being like purple, white, frills, yay. I list out the things I want to happen in a painting and then I put it together and it's like it reminds me and I'll like keep track of stuff or I'll do tiny little like thumbnails like I want the light to come this way yay and then there's gonna be shadow there yay <laughs> I just find that it's nice and like black and smooth and you can like go around things this is like a, a devil slug it's good just for getting ideas out I like it I've bought a bunch of them I keep them one hand whenever I'm taking notes or I need to do quick thumbnails that's all when I'm feeling even worse about my drawing. I do a lot. I did like a like a whole semester doing drawings with this thing. This is Little Mai from the Moomin series. I got this in a store in Chinatown in Boston. It just creates really nice lines, or at least it did at the time. It's like I, I've used the whole thing and I just used it for a lot of projects. This is just a tangent, a footnote. I really could just take her off and like just have her nearby. But now I'm like weirdly connected to this pen, so it stays with me. It's just a part of me now. There's nothing I can do about it. Move away from pens! How do I plan out what I'm gonna draw? Maybe you've seen my other videos and you notice that I don't put down my initial lines with graphite. Like it's never gray, it's always in color in some manner. That's because I only plan for paintings using the Prismacolor Coal Erase pencil eraser colored pencils. Coal erasers? They come in a small variety of colors. I typically buy the packs these days, just because if you buy them individually online, they only offer like four different colors. If you're in person in an art store, a lot of times they have all the different colors and you can pick out which ones you want. But since I live far away from most art stores that operate that way, I just buy the pack of them that like 12 that has each of every color and I just use the ones that I want. And sometimes the other ones get lost to the wayside, like yellow. When am I gonna use yellow? yellow for these. Never. But also the yellow is like a brown, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The erasers on these suck. I hate them. I don't like them. I always, as soon as I start drawing with them, I rip them out like this. So it's just the metal. And then I'll typically take a better eraser that I can trust and I'll pop it on top and it stays nice and secure. The reason I don't put it on top of these is because I find that it comes off way easier. I don't know why it should be the same, but at least this way, I think like it gets a vacuum on the inside and it just stays on way nicer. You can probably see I've used this one quite a lot. A lot of times they get down to here and then I either have to like just move on to another one or I use like a pencil extender. You can see the markings on like this piece that I like drew out on paper and then I converted to a digital copy. The like pink hue around the sides is a coal erase marker, coal erase pencil. Other times I start to just draw out thumbnails with these. They erase pretty well, which I like, like if I wanted to go in here, it's enough of an erasing that I can continue to work over it. I have a hard time with graphite being the under drawing of my painting purely because sometimes with lighter colors, it can mix with the graphite and then produces smudging. And I'm just not having that in this moon of my life. It's just not happening anymore, okay? I use colors, the colors work with the colors I know I'm gonna use. And then the great part, if you say like have here, you wanna have like the foreground be one color, and then you want to make sure you know that something else is like the background. You use a different color and then it's like easily marked. It's like, I want that to be in the background and I want this to be in the foreground. Boom, easy, done. If you have like a character and then you want to have like the character be here and then have like another character staring at them, you don't want to like mix up what goes to which character. So drawing it with another color makes it way easier to differentiate the two. Now, these always come with a dull tip. You gotta sharpen it on your own. Some people use mechanical sharpeners to get their perfect point. I find that that upsets the lead and it's more prone to breakage that way. Other people like to take a knife and just carve it, but sometimes having it be the uneven like facets like hurts my hand when I have to hold it for a while. The best sharpener I have found is this one. It typically comes with like a lid over. I have a few of these like laying around. If you have the lid, it can like catch the stuff on the inside, but I will admit the lid part is prone to breaking. You may be wondering, KK, what is the brand? of this sharpener. The brand's name is Cum. Um, I'm not joking. Uh, it's not spelled the C, luckily. It's K-U-M. It's German, I think, so I think it might mean to have the umlauts above it. But if you have the lid on, I'm, I'm pretty sure it just says Cum. 
Like, it just, come, come. <laughs> so inappropriate. It has two little holders here, and a lot of times, you know, sharpeners have that, so if you have a bigger pencil, you can sharpen the bigger pencil. This one actually serves a different purpose, which is way better. You put it to sharpen in one side, and then it gets to this shape and it has the kind of dull top here and you're like oh i don't want to use that because then it is just going to get me like those kind of shapes fear not dear listener you put it in the other side afterwards and it's at a different angle for the sharpener so you put it in for a few twists more and it creates a beautiful point which is great because then you can draw with it and once this gets you know to a point where it's now dull you can either put it in here to remove more of this width or you can just resharpen it right here to get it a better tip again it's the sharpest and it doesn't break the lead and it's a nice size you can carry around it's just i i only use these if i'm not using like an actual knife to sharpen my pencil, I use this. And it sharpens so nicely. Look at that. It doesn't even break apart. What? You don't have a dustpan for your art supplies table? You should get one. Now, contrary to popular belief, that is not popular and not a widespread belief, I don't just use inks and paint. I actually love using graphite to complete illustrations. I just don't find it to be as marketable or interesting for people to watch me do. So I do it kind of for me for fun. And I don't often like show people the process of me doing it because it, it looks weird on its midpoint. Um, But to get to a long story short, Graphite! I do do it! Yeah! Let me set the scene. Mechanical pencils. I used to have a teacher that no matter what hated mechanical pencils. She wanted you to use like an actual like technical pen. If you had like the paper mate drawing pencils, she, she, would, she would snap at you during class and be like, why are you using that? But like these would be okay, even if they had the exact same lead. It doesn't make sense, but I loved her. This one is a 0.5. This bad boy is a 0.3. That's tiny. Just to demonstrate that for you, click it out a little bit. Oh god, it has no lead. Does she? She has lead. She is tiny, tiny girl. She creates the littlest baby lines the world has ever seen. And it's beautiful, and I love her. She's Pentel brand also. It's called the Graph Gear 500. I use it with a blender sometimes to fill in areas. A lot of the time this eraser is so small I end up getting to the metal here and it messes up my painting because it scratches into the paper. So there's supposed to be like covers that go over these um, but I've seemed to have lost them over the years. These are easily replaceable as well. You just kind of grab it and you can like sometimes push up the eraser and then inside here is where the lead is. Standard stuff. And you could buy replacements. I don't know if I already said that. But when I do need to erase and I need to do fine details, I have this Paper Mate Tough Stuff eraser stick. It's just been worn down. This one is also sold in different brands. Like there's one that's like general brand. Um, it has this long little noodle here. You can use it in a typical way where it pushes it out over time, slide it back in, and it erases pretty well. Look at that. Cuts right through like a gem. This one's the same, except it's really, really tiny. So if you need to do fine details, this is your girl if you're drawing a lot of wrinkles and ruffles. She's your lady. I also have a third one that's like a flat square. I don't know where she is. But just if you haven't gotten eraser pens yet and you do a lot of graphite work, get some eraser pens. If you need to do things serious mode, this is an electric eraser. I always thought these would be overrated or like destroy your paper, but they're actually pretty gentle. This is just like a cheap one. It just kind of rotates. I thought they would go like go back and forth, but it just it spins. And if you have a large area, you can really easily just go through. The more you push down, the less it works well, so you just kind of have to lightly graze it over. Sometimes it can blur it just because, you know, the material it's made out of, but I've used it several times if I have something extreme that I need to erase, and it's pretty good for that. For the big guns, if you have a big issue and you need to erase it, there is this bad boy from Nayanico LTD. This is the Moo Eraser, professional eraser, Moo. Moo. It comes in a little paper container. It has some nice sharp edges. I wear it down. I typically keep it inside here. It has a little like frayed edge to break it out of just so that it doesn't get covered in graphite. This is my favorite eraser and it has been for years because it has this cool feature. 
where instead of like breaking apart into a million pieces and requiring you to brush it away, you can just rub it like this and it all stays together. It doesn't break into a million pieces that you have to like move and risk blurring stuff. It just all goes together and it erases really well. Like it's it's gone besides the stuff that got blurred from this bad boy. Even like the coal erase stuff, it does a really good job with erasing. It'll obviously de also depend on the kind of paper you use, but look, it's just one noodle. It's just one noodle. She's a blessing. Now you may be asking, KK, what kind of artwork do you make with this? I'm excited to show you because I never show this on my channel. I don't know how well she's gonna fit on camera, but this is my giant A4 or A3 sized moleskin. She's glorious. With these, with these materials, this one in particular, I can do a lot of small, delicate lines. And on the moleskin, it erases so beautifully and so easily that I can just keep reworking a piece. This one was really fun to do. It's the first drawing I did. It has a lot of like fine details and it has little cow heads and opium and shells. And I had so much fun doing it with like the swirls that like cut out through the material I did. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I can do other fine detail pieces like this with this girl that's part in the water who's like a fish deity with the big eyeballs. I can do much different pieces like this one that I'm sure does not fully fit into the frame. <laughs> and I can go to like the edge of the page with all these little tiny lines and details that take forever. Or I can create pieces like this that probably also won't fit in the frame, but you know, it's still good. A lot of tiny detail, full scene. Look at that out. Hold on, I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see all the details. she lovely? I love doing this piece. I got to put in so much stuff and like hidden things. There's a lot of like creatures hidden in the foliage too. I can fill the entire page with graphite and then just erase out with this and it creates this wonderful hair effect. I can redraw Barbie stuff. By the way, in this notebook I have like the thumbnail art I did for that other piece and like this is originally what I laid out and what I was going to do and you know it's it's cool to see how things change from like thumbnail idea to like final drawing. Next up, I got some watercolors. You can see these all the time in my YouTube shorts, TikTok type things, my short videos. I've been using them a lot in relation to a spray machine. This is just like a cheap random branded air spray makeup machine. I guess it's from Luminaire, but you just put it up here and it sprays out. You can do this with inks and like other like liquidy materials and it creates a great base for your painting. It sets the tone. My recent kind of obsession has been trying to fill out this sketchbook that was like 10 bucks on Amazon just by like filling in these backgrounds each time with these. You can see it, it creates a great like particle effect that's like nice and uniform and smooth. I've really been enjoying it. It's just a great base to work on. I highly recommend them. They truly are concentrated. I don't know if I'd do a full painting, like a watercolor painting with them, but that's just not my biz anymore. I took a watercolor class in college. I did it, it was cool. I got introduced to these, but yeah, no. Just does not. Not my forte. I like it when things are cartoonish and watercolor just doesn't feed into that for me. Boop. Next up is pretty obvious if you've ever seen a single video on this channel. Gouache! I like Holbein more than I like Winsor & Newton. I don't know why, most of the time they work exactly the same, but I'm just a Holbein girly. I can't help it. I love Holbein. I have a bunch of them. I nearly have every color of them. But to fill in the gaps, where there aren't colors for Holbein, I like to buy Winsor Newton just because even if they're called the same thing, the way they're made can be different and it just produces a different color. So I like using them together. They work perfectly in sync and I love them both dearly. To show you which ones I have would be kind of silly, like which paintings I've done with them, just because like while I'm talking now, I'm just gonna flash them on the screen. You can just see my body of work or just check out another video on this channel. It's most likely done with this medium. It's just beautiful. I can't show you it in action. It's just, they're gouache. What info do you want? They're gouache, they're beautiful, they're matte. Um, they were invented back in the heyday of advertising because they could be drawn and then photographed without reflection and that was great for the fast turnaround at the time. Originally used in like lettering a lot, I've heard. They're good, sir. They check out. But what about the supporting cast? The non-mediums? The stuff I use all the time, but it's not like an art material per se. It's not like something, it's not, it's not a goop. It's not a goopy liquid that you spread on a piece of paper. What about those? These are my home girls. Number one, it's just a spray bottle. It's just full of water. That's about it. Not distilled water, just tap water. It just goes, boosh. It's great 
if you want to lift something, you can spray it and then like dab it with a paper towel and it lifts up. It's great if you want to like lay down a wash, you spray the whole thing as opposed to like getting a brush and manually doing it. It's good for that. Gouache can be reactivated with water because it's a water-based medium. So if you spray your palette down, you can just reactivate all your paints as opposed to trying to like add water to each of them. It's great for that. I've had her for so many years. She's truly the OG. Now say you have a little bit extra of your color and you don't want to waste it because eventually you have to clean your palette at some point because you just get sick of looking at it. I buy a bunch of little tiny containers and if I have like something that's being stubborn, I just pop it in here. Like there was this dried bit of some paint that came out of the tube. I threw it in here with some water. Now it's reactivating. I can use this later. If I'm doing something with the spray material, if I'm using the spray gun and then I have extra, oh my gosh, it's dripping. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh God, oh God, she's everywhere. This one apparently is not watertight. Ouch. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Look at that beautiful color though. Oh my gosh. Oh my, how? Why? Why did you spritz? Oh, um. It's great just to keep it in an extra little vial nearby and then you can use it later on to like tone paper or jump back into a project. Just don't, you know, waste the materials. It's it's good. Tape. A lot of people, like, you have to tape down the sides of your paintings. Um, sometimes it's in order to keep your painting from warbling. I do it just to give my pieces a border so I have something to hold on to if I need to hand it to somebody. It just makes it a lot easier and it's really fun to remove it at the end. But here's the downside. A lot of tapes stick to your paper and then rip up and remove your paint and make the sides of your painting gross and icky and evil. I found that this one is much less likely to do that. Of course, it depends on your paper as well as your tape, but this one is is good. I used to use just like any kind of masking tape for this, but then I had a teacher come up to me and she was like, hey, why are you using a bright pink on the side of your painting? That is throwing off your value. It's messing with your eyes. And I was like, what? And she was like, use a neutral color. I swear to God, use a neutral color. So I bought this and I haven't gone back since because she was right. Having a bright maroon or blue or magenta on the side of your painting is an absurd way to live your life. Some people use freaking washi tape, like washi tape. It has all these bright colors and patterns and they're like, this is works, this is fine, this is good. I don't know how you guys are surviving. I fear you every day of my life. She's still bleeding. Oh my god. Stop. Next up is a non-medical syringe. It's not like a scary needle. It's very, it's dull. It's not, it's not scary. This is just a regular art needle, I guess. It's not made for art. But if you have to transfer liquids, having this on hand for a variety of like moving water, moving materials, adding water to things, it's extremely helpful. I recommend it. I bought a huge pack of them for super cheap. It's just a bunch of dinky plastic, but it makes moving things around a lot easier as opposed to like trying to dab it up with a paintbrush and move it somewhere else. When it comes to brushes, I have a lot of them. They're all important to me. There's even more than in this brush in my studio, so. Yeah, get out of here. My favorite brand, however, is Princeton. I just find that their products hold up the best. They think they're all synthetic. This one is just a bigger one. The green, the green holder is, you know, slightly shaped different, I suppose. I use a lot of these 100 level Princeton Selects liners. They're great for just like rounding corners beautifully. I use them all the time. Sometimes I do entire paintings with like the majority of the brushwork being done by this brush. And they hold up nice, they hold their point. As soon as you put like paint on them, they're like ready to game. I love her. She my home girl. Now it's time for honorable mentions. Prismacolors, I don't know how that happened. Prismacolors. <laughs> they're great for doing thumbnail sketches. Some people do entire pieces with them. I don't know how their carpal tunnel is going right now. I sometimes, or used to a lot, use them on top of gouache. It was a fun, cool time. I already have the whole set. Like I got them when I was in like middle school. When I graduated middle school, I like was like, can I get this as a graduation gift? My mom begrudgingly was like, fine. A majority of the lead inside somehow is already snapped and broken just from over time. So that's cool. Now I already have a bunch of these and I buy like refills on the ones that I've already, you know, like used. I, there's certain colors like indigo or black that you use a lot more often. But when I was at the Goodwill bins a while back, I was shuffling around and I got a familiar smell. And if anyone knows these, they have a very particular nice smell to them. And I was sniffing at the Goodwill bins. And I came across an entire collection of Prismacolors that someone had just thrown away. They had abandoned it. It's here. 
I like went through and I was just grabbing them all like a little pack rat. And so now I'm set for Prisma colors for the rest of my life. I never have to buy another one, ever. They're all here, I have them. To fix these, because the more you like throw around a Prismacolor, the more the lead on the inside breaks up. I just put them on a hot pan and left them out in the sun on a hot summer day. So hopefully it kind of re-emulsified together. Some people say put them in the oven. I wouldn't put wood in the oven, personally. That's just me. I don't want to start a house fire. My grandma died in a fire. I'm not doing that shit. I did some thumbnail sketches with Prismacolor nowadays. I like to use it because it makes a fun sticky. I did a shorts painting of this. It's Adam and Eve, fun garden. I just wanted to lay it out, the general idea of what it looks like. This little sketch is done with Prismacolor on top of gouache. You can get like the rougher texture going on there and kind of, you know, it's a fun, playful way to work on top of gouache. Last but not least, she's the most popular material online right now because she works on so many surfaces. It's Miss Posca Paint Maca. These are fun, they're good, nice, thick, opaque, fun to get using, fun for lines. I use it to paint on jackets. Nice and opaque, everyone has the same issue where sometimes they pill up. That's just life, but I love all the different colors and I love working with them together and I love blending them in fun ways. You could do a little devil, boop. It's cute. It's hard to show, but I've used it to do like lining on this seahorse for this jacket that I'm painting. It's good to like sharpen off the lines and work on top of like acrylics, especially like acrylic gouache. It's good for that. And now that seems to be it. Now everything's out of order and in a mess and you've heard about my favorite art supplies. They're good, I like them. Go forth, buy things, create art. That is all, goodbye, bye. But also if you have any questions about any of these art supplies and you want to know more about them and how they work or how to get them or where they are, stuff like that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and fill them in as much as possible if you just have like curiosities of how they work with like another medium or on top of things or if they bleed, stuff like that. I probably know I've messed around and found out on a lot of different things. And while you're down there, if you'd like to lichen cement substrate, that is up to you. You are a free-bodied, free-willed, free person. But still do what I say. That's all I'm saying. Okay, now, peace.